Naoya Inoue just reminded the world why he's called the monster. And today we're breaking down the biomechanics of his complete dismantling of Cogdenas. So let's get right into the anatomy of his most recent win. All right, you guys know I love me some Inoue, okay? I had to break this one down. I've broken him down in the past, but his most recent bout versus Cardenas, I just had to. His, it, everything that we talked about in the first video is just a really good display here, and I wanted to break it down briefly. Okay, so we'll start here when he hits him with the right uppercut. Just like any really good striker, he's using his hips and his leverage from his lower body. Okay, so you'll see his center of mass start to shift from his right to his left leg. He really lows that left leg up. And as he's shifting his weight to the left, you can see him kind of do that really good triple extension that we talk about in a lot of really good fighters, how they transmit that energy from the ground all the way through the chain up into the extremity to deliver the strike. Okay, so we've got that triple extension from at the ankle plantar flexion. I know that's a little bit confusing. That's actually extension of the ankle for muscles like the gastroc and the soleus. We've got extension of the knee in the closed chain for muscles like the quadriceps. And then at the, at the hip, he's doing something a little bit different, not technically pure triple extension. So he's got the hamstrings and the glute specifically the, the right glute max helping extend and externally rotate, along with those deep external rotators as well. Uh, so he's getting a lot of lumbo-pelvic rotation as he shifts his weight from the right to the left with that really good triple extension. So now we're going to move up to the lumbo-pelvic rotation and just talk about kind of the trunk in general. Because sometimes, and we'll see this a little bit later, sometimes we'll actually see that hip and shoulder plane separate. But as we've known with rear arm strikes, sometimes we don't get that separation. It's actually better to move in that transverse plane, that rotational plane, in the, along the same plane. So what we see here is with that lumbopelvic comes thoracic rotation as well. So we can see that demonstrated by the plane of his shoulders and the plane of his hips staying relatively the same. They're moving along that plane. So now let's move to the front of the shoulder, that anterior shoulder girdle, muscles like the, the, and look at how lean he is. You can actually see those upper, those clavicular fibers of the pec major that are involved with shoulder flexion, which is essentially what he's doing here with this uppercut, anterior delt, and a nice isometric bicep contraction into elbow flexion to, to help deliver that the energy from the upper extremity. Nice isometric contraction there. So all of this happening at once for him to deliver this nice uppercut. Okay? And then my favorite part about this entire thing is this left hook here to the body. So you can see he already, like all good fighters with really good fight IQ, they start to shift their hips. So right now, if you take a look at the front of his hips, the wording here on the front of his shorts starts to face pretty much all the way to the left of Cardenas. And this puts a lot of tension on some of the muscles in the front of the trunk here. So we'll start from here, the external oblique on the left produces right trunk rotation. So whenever we shift our hips, we can imagine that that muscle is put on stretch along with the muscles of the anterior shoulder girdle again, except this time on the left side. And so we've got the pec major. You can actually, it's a really good view of this, okay? So you've got, the pec major has three kind of attachments proximally or closer to the center of the body. You've got one on the collarbone, the clavicular fibers, one on the sternum with the sternal fibers, and then you've got costal fibers. And you can see all three of these move away from its attachment up here in the superior humerus. So watch as his chest and collarbone and ribs move away from his humerus. That is lengthening the pec. And so the same thing is happening here, the external oblique, but it's a lot harder to see. So the external oblique and the pec major are lengthening so the eccentric contraction. And then in order to have a much more powerful contraction, I've actually made a longer video on the stretch shorten cycle and I'll link in the description, but this produces a more forceful concentric contraction, which means the muscles are shortening. And so he harnesses all of that energy from the ground and through the trunk and then delivers it through the body. It's really nice upper quadrant strike there to deliver. So he hits him a couple more times and we're just gonna fast forward here a little bit into the next part. And so I wanted to show you this because I feel like this is really reminiscent of the uppercut. We broke down uh, Canelo Alvarez's uppercut. We know he's got an insanely good uppercut. But this is just another example of when the hip shoulder separation may not necessarily be beneficial. So we've got, let's look at his hips here. We've got him he knows that he's throwing an uppercut and he knows that he's got, he wants his center of mass to move towards his opponent and up. 
Okay, so we know that the, the uppercut is moving from an inferior position to a superior position, and that requires us to lower our center of mass if we want to use our hips effectively. So we see him lower his center of mass as he's doing this. So pay attention right here. You'll see his shoulder blade or the scapula start to depress as he lowers his center of mass. Then in order to produce shoulder flexion like we talked about before, you can see a really good view here. We've got the upper fibers of the pec major, the anterior delt, and then the bicep. So we also see his lat poking out here and that's a pretty good indication that he's also getting really good follow through protraction with muscles like the serratus anterior, which kind of hides underneath some of these. Uh, but you, you see this really good shoulder protraction in, in strikers because that provides a lot of stability. Once he makes contact, you can see that energy kind of moving through his body and absorbing all the way through into his trunk. So just amazing biomechanics. And this is all a product of his ability to kind of move and keep a nice wide base with his stance and really just never seems to be off balance unless he's caught, which doesn't happen very often. But hope you guys like this breakdown. I know I enjoyed watching it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.